One, two, one, two, three, four. The kids yes. That's right. When the kids go to sleep, <laughs> it seems too light and cheery. I know. <laughs> yeah, when the kids go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need a heavy metal version of that. Did it? I know we got Terry Crews, Boss Root, and then it's like la da da da. We need a more uh, <laughs> happy. We need a yeah. We need a stronger version. All right, welcome to the podcast. When the kids go to sleep, right here at Maker Studios in Los Angeles, California, with our guest, the one man wrecking ball. The great <laughs> man of mayhem, Boss Rootin, is in studio with us. We're so excited to have him uh, since we shot a YouTube video together a couple months ago. We're good friends. And yes. he decided to come down and do the podcast with us. And right before he came to be on the, this podcast, he was on the phone doing an interview with Sports Illustrated. <gasps> so be, when is that going to come out? Do you know when they tell you when that's coming nah, out? No clue. No. He's all over the place. He's coming to be in a new movie called Drop the Boom, coming out October 12th Here with Kevin comes. James. Here comes the boom with Kevin James and Selma Hayek. Did you say drop the boom? <laughs> I like to drop the boom. I like to drop, <laughs> drop, I like the, to drop the beat drop like the it's hot. Speaking of dropping beats, uh, Boss has his own little beat that he drops. Check this out. Yeah, baby, it's me. Now, whoa, 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 relax. Come on, you know I've been training hard for this fight. That? Oh, oh there we go. Fight. There we go. Hey, don't tell me that you didn't watch it, huh? You didn't. <laughs> Why do you think I'm going to? Check it out. I want to chill. I want to relax. <laughs> I want to chill. And maybe have, have some sex. sex. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, sex. <laughs> No, hey, come on. You know. I love it. So he does. He's a man. He's a renaissance man. He does everything. Yep. He's a film actor. He's a fighter. And he's a musician. It's, uh, it keeps on going. It's it, unbelievable. Definitely. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a topic that a lot of you have commented on and asked us to talk about, uh, is which is bullying. It's kind of been in the news a lot lately, and it's an issue that definitely should be addressed and something that Boss dealt with early on in his life. Uh, he said he had some asthma and eczema, which, you know, caused, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know what the psychology is be behind it. Why do you think that kids are so mean? I think anything they don't understand. That's it. Yeah, they think it's uh, contagious, they, mm. you know, so they don't want to come close to you because it looks horrible. You know, I would do this, it will burst, and sometimes stuff will come out, so it's disgusting. You know, so it's, it's understandable, you know, and they, uh, that's what kids do. Once you don't understand yeah. it, you know. Oh. You're afraid of. I think that's the thing is like you're afraid of what you don't understand. We yeah. just went and watched this movie called Paranorman and that was kind of like the whole. Have you, have you seen that movie? Not that yet, cartoon? but I want to see it because I think it's a good movie. Yeah, right? you should yeah. take your kids to it because it's it talks about that. Things that people don't understand, they're afraid of. And so then they persecute that's why they, or they're mean yep. to. You know what I mean? And it was talking about the witches specifically. I won't ruin the movie for you. But bullying is something that happens, uh, you know, every day. We have some statistics here. It says that bullying happens every seven minutes. Uh, adult intervention, uh, I don't know what those is four percent. Peer intervention is eleven percent, and no intervention is eighty five percent. So eighty five percent of kids that are bullied don't have any help or you know don't out, don't get out of it. So. That's crazy. So what it so boss tells a story of how he you know went and saw this movie Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee and decided to kind of like. You know, what was it about that movie that made you decide that you wanted to become Bruce Lee? <laughs> well, you said Other I was a wrecking <laughs> machine, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what he was. You know, you see one dude kicking everybody's butt. You go like, okay, I want to be like him because that's going to get me out of a lot of trouble. You right. know, I'll, uh, I'm going to be the man. So that's what I did. I just started training. I walked around with nunchucks. Then I made myself very dangerous because they were not in the hole. It was and just you hit like yourself hit with, with them. <laughs> with <laughs> a hammer, hammer in there. <laughs> so if you start doing this, stuff, suddenly they would let the fly around. <laughs> you know, I would go to the store with kung fu shoes and nunchucks in my neck. I would go buy milk. <laughs> <You know? laughs> just to look intimidating. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it. That's how it goes, you know. And I, I when, here's a here's kind of like an opposite side of that. I feel like kids these days need to be a little tough sometimes. You know what I mean? Because it's not easy. Well, my mom, she works at a middle school, and she says that because of this new anti-bullying thing, there's a lot of kids who are coming in and complaining all the time in the office, like, well, they're bullying me. And I remember my mom growing up, she'd be like, 
you know, my mom was a you know a cowgirl. She grew up on a farm where she would like rope sheep and stuff. And I don't know why she roped sheep, but she did. <laughs> but she was a tough girl, and she'd always teach me like you got to stand up for yourself. And I remember specifically in like fifth grade, there was this kid every day after lunch. This kid could like burp really, really loud, and he would come up and burp in my face every day. And it was so gross and annoying. And he would laugh, and I and he was bigger than me, so I'd kind of just be like. <laughs> And I feel like that maybe was a kind of a form of bullying. Like he'd always just come up and burp right in my face and kind of like laugh at me and then just like walk off. And I'm like, I didn't like it. You know what I mean? And I would try to like say, knock it off. Stop it. And not until the day that when he came up and burped in my face, because I, I remember telling my mom, she's like, well, just hit him. I remember she <laughs> telling me I like that. your mom. <laughs> so I remember that day that I, he came up and he just belched right in my face. And so I just hauled up and I slapped him right in the face, like open hand. I just slapped him. And he was like, oh. and we ended up getting in this fight. And then the teacher came out and had to take us in. And we both got yellow tickets. But <laughs> after that, he never burped in my face again because it just, it took me standing up to him finally. And my mom, she, she was telling me, she's like, some of these kids just need to kind of like toughen up a little bit and like mm-hmm. kind of fight back. And, and sometimes, you know, you don't want to promote violence, but I think there's something to be said there where sometimes you just have to fight back, you know? Sometimes you have to do it. You can't turn the cheek all the time. You know, if it's really keep, keeps on going, you have to do it. Uh, I know that everybody tries to stay away from that, of course, you know, and it would be great if the people who are watching, the kids who are watching, go get somebody, you know, we try to also say in the anti-bullying commercials I did with Cartoon Network to do that, you know, but, you know, you, it's all easy for us to say, but I know as well, you know, when I had to go to the forest and climb in a tree, well, that happens on the street also. The kids get followed, can't get rid of them, you know, at a certain time you have to go like, okay, this is it, you know, and now right. I got to do something and, and tell them. Most of the time when you tell them at that moment and you look at that in the eye, they, they'll, they get it, you know, and if they still want to try it, then well. I always say when you're in total right, that's what I always believed. I cannot lose. Right. I truly believe I cannot lose. Like when I see kids, when I was a kid and I see other kids getting bullied, there can be 12 guys bullying one kid, I will go. And I, I, I had that urge all the time, even when I get older, when I see people, you know, there's a problem, I walk over, and while I'm walking over, I'm telling myself, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? <laughs> you know, and then I just keep going. I have to say something. But you want to protect to stop people. It. Yeah. That's it, okay. you know, yeah. because it's annoying. It annoyed me when I was a kid. I know how that guy feels, so I want to do something. Yeah. So I know that we talked about this, but would you mind telling your story a little, a little here on this podcast about your bullying experience and what, how you overcame that? Well, with me, I was always a good athlete, so that 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 helped me. Uh, they were always a little bit afraid of me, anyway. You know, when with PE, I would always be the first guy to pick. Nobody would hang out with me, but dodgeball or something, I was the first guy to choose because I I was a good athlete. Uh, so they, I always thank God I had that. Uh, but they were, of course, ganging up on me because mm-hmm. then with the four or five they came, and then you know I I, I would just run and go into the forest. I had a forest uh, clo- very close to my house. I mean, literally 30 yards away. And I would climb in a tree, and I, I had this trail through the forest that I could go from treetop to treetop. And that's how I would escape them. And, and just some guys tried it until one guy tried it, and uh, he actually fell. He almost almost died. So after that, it never happened again. He fell with his head and from high, man. I mean, he went all the way down. I think he's dead. And with his head, I think this much next to like this big rock he could have smacked oh it yeah. could have it would have been so dead yeah you so know? it really sounds it sounds like a movie it sounds like a movie it sounds like a tarzan movie yeah when you do that people uh, you know i i lived in the trees i yeah. really lived in the trees i had a, a home tree not with uh, where i could sit in but i would sit on the branches and it was a mm-hmm. certain tree that if five, four kids would come in it was one tree that went out like like this uh-huh. You know, all uh, big branches. And I would jump from one to the other. With the four of them, they couldn't even get me. Because nobody had the cojones to do what I did. To I jump would jump and, branch, and, branch. Whoop, and I would go be a... Uh, yeah, that's, I think that's how I got athletic, I guess. Yeah. That is so yeah. amazing. So tell yep. us about when you... That, that one big boy that you stood up to. Um, uh, ta- taekwondo. I started doing Taekwondo finally after a long time, asking my parents. And then when I uh, trained there for like two or three months, I, I was beating up the big guys there already. So they said, my God, you know, and you hear the people talking and they say, did you see that kid? Did you see? And you hear that. You saw your confidence. Get your confidence up, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, this one day was that he was with a group of guys. They came by and they called me again. Like most of the time was leper or something like that. You know, and um, and and that was it. I shout something back. I don't know what I shouted back, but they started laughing. I remember, and they came back, and I remember also just stopped my bike and I put it on the stand, and I was just waiting. 
I said that was it. That was the moment that I, I was either going to get beat, but I was going to do something now. And that he came, the biggest one, right away jumped off, pushing, you know, how that goes, and when your kids with the chest. Right. And I just knocked him out. I gave him one punch, and he was gone. And everybody was in shock. And I looked. I said, this is it? Can I go now? <laughs> and, and really, everybody was just, the I just kept my bike. Like, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody did anything. Yeah. You see, that? There you can see how... How close they really are, right? Right, right. Instead of attacking me at the same time, no. I think deep down inside, nobody likes the bully, and they're yeah. all afraid of him, and that's the reason they're with him. They they think it's kind of cool, but you know, nobody likes the guy. Yeah. So I think one thing that's important is to, like you said, is to stand up for other people. There's this effect called the Genovese effect, I believe, where nobody wants to step in because nobody, like, oh, I shouldn't do anything. But that's sad. That 85 percent of bullying goes unaided or no. Nobody, you know, stands up for other people. And I feel like even in our society, that's something that we can do. I was reading some comments the other day about um, somebody said that if somebody's bullying you, a lot of times it's like, you know, they said in the comment to say, well, thank you for caring so much to make me such a big part of your life. I mean, like think of how much mm -hmm. time they're spending on, you know, bothering and, and bullying that person where they obviously are afraid of you or jealous of something. Like why are they picking on you That's specifically? It, it is. It, it is insecurity. It's something I always say, I feel sorry for them because something is happening to them at the home front. Right. You know, the dads are kicking their butts. So something is going on that he needs to do this to need to feel powerful because if you really break it down, you know, attacking with a group, one person, you're a coward. You know, you're 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 very pathetic to me. Now, if you and and they pick out the weakest guys, also right. on top of that, go go get a guy, real guy. You know, last time also at this guy, he came. Uh, I'm, I'm putting gas in my car, and he comes in. He's all tough, and he goes like, uh, "Hey, what well, can I get a car like that? I want to buy a car like that." And I go, uh, "Well, you got to work then, right?" Oh yeah, what do you do? What do you do for work? And I can say TV also at this moment. I go, of course, because he tried to intimidate me. I said, I'll beat people up for a living. And, that, <laughs> and I would have never said, normally I say I do TV. Mm -hmm. And he was right away, what, uh, what do you mean? I said, well, that's exactly what I mean. I said, what do you want to do? Oh, I'm, I'm a scrapper. Why don't you come to my gym then tonight? You know, but his whole demeanor changed. And he right. said, I'll be there tonight. I said, no, you're not. He said, no, I'll be there tonight. I said, I guarantee you're not going to be there. You know, I know people like you. And it was just, it was totally his whole intimidation act backfired. And, and, he, and he walked out. And of course, he wasn't there. You know, but that's, you got to go right into a tech. Normally, I would never say that. I said, you know, get a job. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, but with this particular instance, I had you to say something tell. like that. Yeah. yeah, right away. Shut him down. You know, don't work there around. There you go. So that's a, go to our at replies, Maria. Can we see some questions on people talking about bullying on the Twitter? <clears throat> oh, some... Hit the, uh, hit the contact up there. See the at button? Yeah, hit that. Let's see if some people are asking some That's questions so about bullying. having her run that. Um, let's see. Okay, so what do you do? What do you do when people are bullying you at school? Um, do you talk to somebody? Do you talk to a teacher? Uh, but I think one important thing is, like Boss said, is just to kind of get to that person, you know what I mean? Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. And I, I know there's all different types of bullying, cyberbullying. It's amazing how anonymity on the internet has created this huge kind of like culture of bullying, how mm -hmm. hater comments, how people can say the, the worst things and I feel like sometimes that's Something just Something they would human. never actually say. Yeah, they would never face. actually never. say. Never. That's face. again, those are the bullies, you know, the pathetic. You know, it's uh, how, how can you look at yourself in the mirror over, say, if you're really a loser like that? You know, being all tough and cool behind the keyboard, that's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think sometimes even people don't realize they're bullying others when they are. And, you know, there's different <coughs> there's different forms, you know. Just by, like, picking out, you know, negative things in other people, I feel like can be a form of bullying sometimes. When, and I think that's human nature. Like, when you, you know, see... A, it, it's like misery loves company. So when you see that somebody else has something bad, if you point it out, it makes you feel less bad about yourself. That, that's it. That then, yeah, but everybody's too stressed out nowadays also on the road, on everything. I used this example like a couple of months ago, I'm driving, parking, backing up with my car at a parking lot and this really tiny person, I mean, she's four feet tall, you know, but I see her, so I stop and apparently like th four feet away is too close. So she started yelling. And I go out of the car. I say, what is the problem? Yeah, you didn't see me. I say, I stopped, right? 
That means I see you. And she made this whole big deal. I say, I know what you're doing. Obviously, you're, you know, you're insecure about how tall you are. And, and that's so now she's getting angry. Uh. I say, no, no, no. I say, stop talking. Why is it? Am I the only person in the world who literally, when somebody backs up, if I'm walking at the parking lot, when somebody backs up, I stop. I stop. And if other cars come, I say, give one second. I help this guy. It right. cost me five or ten seconds of my life. Right. But nobody else does that. Yeah. H holding the doors open. I'm at the train station. You know, when, when old people came in, I get up. And, and the other kids, they just keep sitting. I say, dude, get up. Right. You know, I say, your parents, they don't teach you this. And well, oh, you have to tell them. Nobody is Conscious taking care of, of other people. It's right. unbelievable. It's unbelievable. They don't care. They go in a movie theater. You know, I these older people. You know, and I... I I hate that when people do that, you know, there's space everywhere and they go right in front of me. And I look at my wife and I go, and she goes, please don't, because there are other people. <laughs> so I said, okay, say no, let's get up. I get up and I sit in front of them. Boom. <laughs> and right away, the woman goes, oh. And I go, excuse me, is there something wrong? She said, yeah, you sit in so much space. I said, do you realize what? you just did this to us? Yeah. And she, oh, did we? I said, that's why I'm doing it to you. It's insane. You know, I'm with my wife, my only only people in the movie theater. this is so funny we're in the middle and all these tough guys come in with their kid with their girlfriends and we're literally we're, there's nobody else we're in the right in the middle and they walk in and they they choose the line in front of us and they want to sit down right and this tough guy is looking he has a smirk on his face and i look at him i say don't sit down dude and he's like ah, <laughs> and he looks again i say i really mean this don't sit down and then everybody got quiet, you know, <laughs> and they looked at each other and then they spread and they went somewhere else. I said, very wise, man, because then it becomes my, 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 why do I say my, my, I, I'm going to make the whole movie miserable for them. Right. You know, if there's something funny, I'm going to go, ah! <laughs> you know, I'm going to do so much. They, I, I'm going to make it really, that's my uh, commitment. That's one thing that I try to teach my kids because it's like, I don't think, it's just human nature. Like, you don't think about other people. Like, I'm always trying to teach my kids, like, pay attention to other people around you. Like, oh, don't sure. step on people's feet. You know, don't stand in the middle of, that's one thing that drives me crazy. There's a bike path. And people are just walking right in the middle of the bike path. I'm like, you're on a bike path. Yeah. Like, move and to the side. And then complain. Complain if right. you, yeah. Like, yesterday, I was I was riding my bike. And this old this guy comes in on his car. And there's this bike path. And he wants to turn. And there's, like, four or five people on their bikes in this bike path. And this guy is trying to turn. And he goes, oh. He throws his hands up in the air. Like, he's so annoyed that there's all these people on this bike path. I think that the key to it is just, like, Think about other people. Be yeah. conscious of other people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, watch out and, and be courteous and just, you know, just be nice, I, you know, and then everybody will be cool and there won't be, you know, all these all this contention. And movie stuff. theater, turn your phone off. There you right. go. Yeah. I had a guy literally <laughs> make a phone. No, nah, I'm in the movie theater. Uh -huh. I go, dude. And he goes, hey, have you? I go, uh -huh. I look at my wife. She goes, oh, God, here we go again. <laughs> you know, so I just go, click. And he, he wants to get up. I push him back. I say, you want your phone back? I'm snapping it in half now. If you want to go out, we'll go out, both of us. And he goes, no, 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 no. So who does that? Right. Yeah. Who does that? Your mother, <laughs> your par parents didn't tell you any manners? You know, who sits behind you like popcorn? <laughs> Why do they have to eat with their mouth open? Why is that? <laughs> you know, I, I told myself right now, if this happens again, one more time, last time I left. I left. I didn't want to even go on the confrontation because I know this is going to go wrong because he was a tough guy, you know, and he's going to say something. I know I'm going to beat him up. So I said, I think I'm out here. You just got to go. But now next time when somebody's going to do that with the popcorn right behind me, I'm just going to leave, get popcorn, go sit right behind him. <laughs> and I'm going to do the same thing back. See what he thinks. You know, see how they react. Because most of the time, my wife always says she can't... Um, you can't save the whole world because I go and have, you're in a cigarette, you throw it out of your car window, man, hope yeah. I'm not next to you because right. I will boom right away go, dude, you know, what are you doing? Who throws stuff out of the window? Who does that? I'm the same way. You when know, I see people I litter. Stand it. Yeah, you want to call them out. Like, what are you doing, man? Pick that up. I'll see people I walk by. I think if by. more people would call people out, then less stuff would happen. And Let's all situation. start calling each other out. But, but a, lot of, a lot of people cannot do it because nowadays you get hit in the face, you know? Right. Like, right. I, I, I can do it because right. I know that they're not going to hit me in the face. I'm still waiting for the one person, you see it many times when they empty the trash, tra the trash can or the uh, what's it, ashtray, yeah. you know, oh, on a parking lot, oh, you know? Yeah, that's... Please, God, let me see one person <laughs> doing that. You watch. I'm going to throw back in. I guarantee right you, car. open the door, throw a bag in the right. car. I say, oh, sorry, there we go. <laughs> you know, unbelievable. Yeah. I can't, uh, but just 
You know that most go in your line, treat people like you want to be treated? Yep. It was so true, man. Golden Just rule. do that. My daughters will always hold the door open for you. They're perfect. You know, in, in any regard. They're perfect with people. It, it's the golden rule. Do unto others as you had to do them to you. Just be a person of dignity. You know what I mean? Like those moments where like you you know, you throw something in the trash and you miss. Be the kind of person, even if pick nobody's around, just pick it up and put it back in the trash. Do those things that are right in the world. People right, think it's yeah. not cool. People think it's not cool. No, it is cool. Right. You're the cool guy. To do what's to right. Do that. You know, we the people start... also who throw money away, like five cents they throw on the floor. Oh, you know, yeah. so disrespectful to do that, That's to weird. money, you know. It's who does that? Yeah. No, I don't need a throw. I say, you really think you're cool now? Right. Is that, it's insane. Yeah. We need to start a campaign. Me and you, when you dress up, we'll be like these, you know, you know, villains. We'll put like little masks on and we'll just go beat up people <laughs> who are doing That's stupid it. things. Yeah. Littering. They don't recognize you know, us. Talking loud in movie theaters. <laughs> yeah. Jump cutting in line. You know, <laughs> oh, that's following yeah. me also. There you can you never go. do that. Cutting I'm in line. I'm right away in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. And it's the tough guys, you know. They just go in, excuse me, go back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So start, start thinking about others and not always about yourself and uh we kind of got off on a tangent there uh, from well that bullying. totally goes along with bullying <laughs> yeah it's the same yeah it's, it's honestly the same. treat it's, others like you want to be treated yeah. you won't have this problem and i think what you said earlier there's a key to that is a lot of times if you think about it feel sorry for bullies because yeah. a lot of times the reason that they're doing that is because yes yeah, something is happening at home somebody is doing that to them whether it be their parents or an older brother or something yeah they're you don't projecting see their the insecurities the on yeah, you on yourself yep all right. Well, thanks again. Uh, seriously, behave yourselves out there, or Boss Rootin is going to come in there. <laughs> if I, if I gonna... will be a superhero like Superman, that will be my thing, man. <laughs> I would constantly have my ears open and listen to <laughs> bullets. <laughs> Gone. And I would do something. A little snap of the finger in the face. <laughs> 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 we need more boss rootins out there. So stick up. I'll tell you this. So we'll end on this story. One of the biggest regrets of my life, and this is a serious story here. One of the biggest regrets of my life is I had a friend, and I won't say his name, but we were in school, and we were sophomores in junior high, and there was this older kid. He was like a junior or a senior, and I remember he was pushing my buddy around in the hallway, and the kid was an older kid, and I was scared of him, and my friend was scared of him, and my friend was like trying to stand up to him, but this kid just kept pushing him, and my friend wouldn't fight back, and there's all this group of people around just watching it. And I remember feeling like so scared for my friend because this dude was just kept pushing him around, pushing him around. And I thought, like later on, and, and I didn't stick up for him, I didn't say anything, I just sat there and kind of watched it, like terrified, like, like, oh, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And this was one of my good, good friends. This is a kid that I would wake up and, you know, we'd ride the bus to school together. We played sports together. And one of the biggest regrets of my life is not just stepping in there and being like, dude, leave him alone. Because yep. I know between me and my friend, the two of us, we could have beat that kid That's up. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what, what I mean? What it worse is also, at the end, if you go this, if you do, if you meet this guy, this bully now, he doesn't even remember no, that. Not that at is all. the yeah. worst part. They don't even remember what they did. It's yep. insane. For what they did to people, it affects them so much. Right. They don't even remember it. They don't even remember. And now, even to this day, it's one of the biggest regrets of my life, honestly, that I didn't step in yep. and say, dude, leave him alone. So we need more of that. Don't be afraid to stick up for what is right. Don't be scared of what could happen to you and, and just get out there and stick up for what's right. What what the, and this is exactly what this is what I have in my mind. If I don't do something, I could not look at myself in the mirror at night. If right. I brush my teeth, I need to look at somebody that I'm I'm in peace with. And if I would have not done anything, God, I, you make me feel like crap, Boss. me nuts. Okay, I'll walk with some. All right. So where, where did the kids go? I want to go out and pick. I'm going to go stand up for a bully. Let's go to some schools. <laughs> Let's, go find a bully. Let's just go drive around school so we find a bully. We'll beat him up. Thanks for joining us. Check it out. Links below for everything. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> hey, listen. Oh. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We got the song playing. This is the outro. <laughs> El Guapo! <laughs> rango, rango! Hey. This is good bully fighting uh. music. Hey. Stop! <laughs> That's the El Guapo song. I love it. Yeah. Uh -huh.